Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spell-binding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Lipaksha. Today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of a country's diversity. Let's begin the show by taking you to see how people celebrated one of the most pious and religious new moon nights in Hinduism, also known as Sharat Purnima. In Odisha, young girls celebrated a variation of the festival called Kumar Purnima, where they kept a fast and prayed to get good husbands in the future. Take a look. Festivals in India revolve around mythological tales, rituals and practices that have shaped religious practices and beliefs in the country. Sharat Purnima is considered to be one of the most sacred festivals in India. The full moon night or Purnima of the Ashwin month is known as Sharat Purnima. Celebrated across the length and breadth of the country, the festival is known by different names like Kojagari Purnima in different parts of the country. Statues of gods and goddesses are decked up in white clothes and items made of milk and dairy are offered to the deities. हम परंपरा से ही शरद पूर्णिमा के दिन माता लक्ष्मी की आराधना पूजन करते हैं और चांदनी रात में जो है खीर रख करके हम उसे औषधि रूप के रूप में उससे जो है पान करते हैं आज ऐसा भी कहा जाता है कि आज की रात में औषधियों की स्पंदन शक्ति बढ़ जाती है तो आज की रात्रि में जब अगर आप खीर जो है भोग अर्पित करके चंद्रमा की रात में रखते हैं और उसे पान करते हैं तो कई असाध्य बीमारियों को भी ठीक करने में ये आपको काफी मदद कर रहा है in Jajpur city of Odisha, a grand festival of maidens was celebrated in the form of Kumar Utsav or Kumar Purnima. Young girls start fasting from the seventh day of Durga Puja until the full moon night of Sharat Purnima to get a handsome husband like Lord Kartikeya, the son of Lord Shiva in Hindu mythology. On the full moon night, unmarried girls get decked up in traditional clothes and celebrate the festival with music and dancing. They form beautiful murals using lily flower petals, also known as koti. हम दुर्गा पूजा के सप्तम दिन से अश्विन का अश्विन मास का पूर्णमी तिथि तक पालन कर रहे हैं और ये लगातार पालन कर रहे हैं और ये वाला जो दिन है इसमें से हम इसमें हम बड़े वाले कोठी बना रहे हैं और एक दिन बाकी है जो कल है वहाँ हमारा वो ये वाला पूजा समाप्त हो जाएगा ये त्यौहार सालों से कई सालों से बना रहे हैं मेरे दीदियों ने और हम लोग भी बना रहे हैं ये त्यौहार खासकर हम अच्छी चांद जैसी पति पाने के लिए हम ये करते हैं शरद पूर्णिमा मार्क्स द ऑनसेट ऑफ विंटर सीजन इन हिंदू लूनर कैलेंडर एंड इज सेलिब्रेटेड इन डिफरेंट वेज नॉट ओनली इन इंडिया बट ऑल्सो इन द नेबरिंग नेशन ऑफ नेपाल एंड बांग्लादेश एज वेल India is a country where different religious communities not just reside peacefully but also participate actively in each other's festivities and occasions. A similar example was seen in the Imphal city of Manipur where the Mera Hauchumba festival was celebrated which portrays brotherhood and harmony. Festivals in India not only portray a region's culture and lifestyle but also show the sense of unity and brotherhood that prevails all around the country. In Imphal city of Manipur, a similar festival called Mera Hau Chungba, which portrays the bond of brotherhood between the people of the hills and valleys in the state is being celebrated for years. Attended by all ethnic groups of Manipur, the celebration takes place at the royal palace where all the rituals are performed. It's having uh, a long legacy of its uh, celebration for about 2,000 years. So, uh, last of all, uh, let this festival bring peace, prosperity, love and unity in the state and uh, re-strengthen the bond of love and the brotherhood in the state. 
Organized by a state level organizing committee, the rituals began with a procession ceremony in the morning where delegates and participants carried out a procession from Sana Konung to Kangla area. A ceremony where different tribal groups from both the hill and the valley exchanged gifts as a token of respect and gratitude for each other's communities were performed. Different tribal communities exhibited their culture through dance and music performances. The occasion served as a demonstration of how diverse communities may coexist peacefully while preserving their own cultures. This is the festival of uh, the ethnic group of Manipur. So uh, this brings the peace and harmony uh, within the community of Manipur. And I also would like to uh, put up in this way, the more we explore the reality, uh, the more peace will bring in this Manipur through this Mirahotumba. The festival itself exemplifies the unity and solidarity and the sense of eternal bonding between various ethnic communities of Manipur. And now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Four tiger cubs, two males and two females were released in the Bengal Safari Park in India's eastern Siliguri city for public viewing. The four cubs, Shera, Shiva, Tejal and Tara were seen prancing and playing around the park to the delight of the visitors. Tigress Shila ke char bachche the, do male, do female, Shera, Shiva, Tejal, Tara. O charo ko aaj pratham bar, means pehli bar after their birth, aaj safari mein choda gaya. India was home to an estimated 40,000 tigers at the turn of the last century. But poaching and the loss of habitat brought them to the brink of extinction. The Indian Air Force celebrated its 90th establishment anniversary with elaborated stunts and maneuvers with its air aerobatic team. Around 80 aircrafts, including indigenously built light combat helicopter Prachan, were among others that showed their aerial prowess during the fly past. It is my privilege to announce that the government has approved the creation of a weapon system branch for the officers in the Indian Air Force. This is the first time since independence that a new operational branch is being created. This will essentially be for manning of four specialized streams of surface-to-surface -surface missiles, surface-to-air missiles, remotely piloted aircraft, and weapon systems operators in twin and multi-crew aircraft. The Indian government also approved the creation of a new branch called the Weapon System Branch. Its creation would entail unification of all weapon system operators under one entity dedicated to the operational employment of all ground-based and specialist airborne weapon systems. Indian Air Force was established on October 8, 1932 as an auxiliary Royal British Air Force. The Indian Air Force safeguards the Indian Territory and has been pivotal in providing help during natural calamities like during the floods in Northern Uttarakhand State in 2011. Indian filmmaker Karan Johar launched a new song depicting the emotions of a lover involved in one-sided love in India's western Mumbai city. Johar along with singer Lakshya Kapoor, actress Erika Fernandez, composers Mohsin Sheikh and Javed Khan released the Hindi song title Tumhe Pyar Karunga. And we have made this song from a very heart. This is 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 a very heart. The song has been composed by Sheikh and Khan and written by Rashmi Singh and Virag Mishra. The video stars Kapoor and Fernandez. Tumhe pyar karunga main itna 
कोई कर ना सकेगा जितना Sufism has not only thrived but also have grown to be seen in India as a means of bringing together various religious groups. It was evident during the Urs special prayers at the shrine of Saint Hazrat Khwaja Qutbuddin Bakhtiyar Kaki where people of all faiths gathered to seek the blessings of the holy saint that the teachings of these saints continue to influence people. The shrine of Sufi Saint Hazrat Khwaja Qutbuddin Bakhtiyar Kaki which is located in the Mehrauli area of Delhi has long served as a symbol of interfaith cooperation and is often visited by a sizable number of devotees from India as well as other countries regardless of their religion Hazrat Khwaja Qutbuddin Bakhtiyar Kaki one of the most revered Sufi saints spent his entire life promoting Sufism and peace Recently 811th urs was organized at the dargah and was attended by individuals of all religions in order to continue his teachings of unity and communal harmony in dargah ye tamam dharmon ke liye hai khaja qutbuddin bakhtiyar ka ki khaja mohindin chisti rehmatullah alai ye sare buzurgan e din jo the inko is cheez se matlab nahi tha ki hindu kon hai musliman kon hai इन्होंने इंसानियत की दावत दी है और इन्होंने अमन और शांति के लिए जितने अपनी जिंदगी जो वक्त की है अमन और शांति इंसानियत को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए की है सब धर्मों के लोग आते हैं अपने अपनी मुरादें पाते हैं ये सब के लिए हैं और जितने भी हैं बाहर से बाहर कंट्री से पूरे हिंदुस्तान से गोसे गोसे चप्पे चप्पे से सबसे यहाँ तशरीफ़ लाते हैं और यहाँ सब मुरादें पाते हैं ये वायस खाजों की चौखट है ये बहुत बड़ी हस्ती हैं और यहाँ पे सब जायरीन आते हैं अपने अपने दिल की मुरादें पाते हैं अल्लाह कबूल फरमाता है जो भी दुआ करते हैं अल्लाह कबूल फरमाता है अचदर फ्रॉम अजमेर शरीफ इज ऑफर्ड हेयर एट द दरगाह एंड मिसी रोटी इज ऑफर्ड हेयर एट द लंगर कमिंग फ्रॉम फार एंड वाइड दीज डेवरीज अटेंडेड द प्रेयर्स टू सीक द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ द होली सेंट It is believed that saints fulfills the wishes of all and nobody returns empty handed from here. Aaj unka urs mubarak hai. Kal Ajme Sharif se chadar aayi thi jo gulab har saal aati hai. Ek guldasta hai. Sufi santon ka jo hamara Ganga Jamuna tehzeeb hai na Sufi santon ne jo bataya hai. Wo ye aastan hai. Sab dharm ke log aate hain Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai sab ke liye khula hai. और सबको फैज यहाँ से मिलता है और मिलता रहेगा क़यामत तक फॉर एच एस द सूफी सेंस लाइक हजरत ख्वाजा कुतबुद्दीन बाख्तियार काकी हैव प्रोपोकेटेड द मैसेज ऑफ स्पिरिचुअलिज्म एंड हारमनी इन आर कंट्री एंड देर टीचिंग्स आर स्टिल प्लेइंग अ सिग्निफिकेंट रोल इन स्ट्रेंदनिंग द थ्रेड ऑफ सेक्युलरिज्म And now let's take a look at how the hospitality sector in India is reviving post COVID-19 pandemic. After a serious hit during the pandemic, the industry is now taking an upward slope. Take a look. The global hotel industry was severely harmed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Strict travel restrictions imposed by countries trying to curb the spread of COVID had a significant impact on supply chains and income for hotels, restaurants, travel and other leisure activities. After a 2-year slump, the sector is gradually returning to pre-pandemic levels. The Indian hospitality industry has particularly accelerated with the government's renewed push to bring attention to the country's underexplored diverse ecosystem, vast heritage and culture. India's Ministry of Tourism laid emphasis on promotion of domestic tourism and launched the Deco Apna Desh initiative. The ministry also announced various fiscal relief measures to revive the tourism sector after the pandemic. The government's initiatives to revive domestic tourism have resulted in record tourist footfall in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. According to the information on public relations of the J&K government, around 16.2 million tourists have visited the region since January this year. We've had uh, so many tourists from different parts of the country internationally coming into Kashmir this year. I think it's wonderful to see so many tourists uh coming here enjoying everything uh we we uh, ensured that these tourists get the best of facilities and our major tourism players have played a major major role in this 
Many other Indian states are too experiencing an upsurge in the number of visitors and travelers. For example, the number of tourists in Goa has exceeded pre-COVID levels since September of 2021. Goa is with the full bank, uh, with the uh, what to call open arms, welcoming tourists back into Goa. It may be a charter tourist or it may be a foreign tourist coming on the FIT or domestic tourists, which are Goa they have made as their first uh, destination, India, that, as our chief minister calls it, uh, tourism capital of uh, India. According to the Investment Information and Credit Rating Agency, the Indian hotel industry started off on a promising note this fiscal year, with the country's luxury hotels registering 56 to 58 percent occupancy in the first quarter, even though it was not peak travel season. Centrally supported initiatives like the National Strategy for Sustainable Tourism and Responsible Traveler Campaign and the National Integrated Database of Hospitality Industry have made travel and tourism even more organized and accessible. Leaders in the tourism industry have been extremely pleased with the government's active response during and in the aftermath of the pandemic. The Indian hospitality industry has enjoyed moderate growth over the past couple of years, but there's certainly some great potential that lies ahead. This is a nation that is rich in culture and diversity. Um, the World Economic Forum ranked India um, in its Tourism Competitive Index uh, 65th to in 2013, and it has grown to 34th in 2019. And now that the recovery is well and truly underway, I am sure that this, this number will rise in the future. The India Brand Equity Foundation. IBEF predicts that the Indian travel market will grow to 125 billion USD in the 2027 to 2028 fiscal year. Despite the initial slowdown with the COVID-19 pandemic, the sector's growth outlook is positive, with revenues on a sharp upward trajectory, with a focus on the country's rich heritage, planned expansion, and steady rise in hospitality standards. India has loudly announced to people around the world that no matter where you are, India is ready to welcome you. And at the end, we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Berlin's Brandenburg Gate was among the monuments and buildings illuminated as part of the city's annual Festival of Lights. Due to the Europe-wide energy crisis, the festival has reduced the amount of illuminated venues from 60 to 35 compared to last year. According to the organizers, the festival will also use 75% less electricity. Germany has enacted various energy saving measures to combat potential energy shortages in the upcoming winter including banning the illuminating of public buildings. The festival theme was vision of her future. Japanese firm Shizumu Corporation introduced a jack of vessel named Blue Wind. It builds big windmills that produce electricity. The total cost of the shipbuilding is $347 million. To celebrate the completion of building of vessel and pray for it to operate safely, a Japanese ceremony named Shinto was organized by the firm. At the end of the ceremony, a holy sacrament was also distributed to all the people. This vessel is 50 meters wide, 142 meters long and has capacity of 28,000 tons. It is capable of carrying big and heavy cargoes. It prepares big crane to guarantee building big windmills regardless hard climate or marine condition. Additionally, it sails by itself operation without the help of a towing boat. スムーズにスピーディーに移動できるということで、これもかなりあの当社の接線のメリットになっておりまして、これによって大幅な風車組み立ての後期短縮が可能になると事業のやはり優位性というところに人役変えるんではないかという形で考えております。All these efforts are being done in order to contribute towards environment conservation, and this vessel is capable of working not only in Japan but all over Asia and the world.
A British artist has taken home decoration to a new level by drawing doodle artwork over his entire home in Kent, southern England. From the outside walls to the kitchen sink, Sam Cox, known as Mr. Doodle, has covered every inch of his home in depictions of figures and symbols. I first started playing video games and reading comic books when I was much younger. Um, I really sort of fell in love with the characters. I would ask my parents if I could draw on like this table or something like that and they'd eventually let me after a bit of persuading turning these 3D objects into sort of works of doodle art. Cox spent two years decorating the 12-room house and took several years to plan according to a post on the artist's Instagram page. Videos of Mr. Doodle's works have received millions of views across his social media platforms. Kyoto is an old city in Japan which is a famous sightseeing spot and is visited by a number of tourists around the year. However, the tourist footfall in the city has gone down due to the coronavirus pandemic. No restrictions for foreign tourists have been eased. Recently, a Tourism Expo Japan 2022 was organized in the city where travel agencies and local tourism organizations put up their stalls to tell the audiences about their services. The travel and tourism industry of Japan is all set for its revival. <laughs> Different airlines, transportation firms, travel agencies, and hotel participated in the exhibition to tell about their services. The global tourism industry is reviving slowly and steadily after the pandemic crunch. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at ani.com. I'm your host, Lipakshi, and it's goodbye from the entire production team. <laughs>